Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wohler for the Advanced Organic Acid Test Mastery course. The title of this short lecture is Neurotransmitter Metabolites, uh, looking specifically at dopamine, DOPAC, and HVA. So in the Advanced Oat Mastery course, we're going to be going through each marker on the organic acids test, specifically from Great Plains Laboratory. Now, when you come away from this course, you'll also be very confident in interpreting other organic acid tests that are on the market, looking at their markers as well. But the organic acids test from Great Plains Laboratory is a very comprehensive profile that gives specific information on underlying metabolic imbalances, as well as the presence of toxins. So in the updated format for the organic acids test, let's just take a quick look at the neurotransmitter metabolites. So one of the things that is now new on the OAT test is this marker called DOPAC. And DOPAC stands for 3,4-dihydroxyphenylacetic acid. It's actually a chemical that is in link from dopamine to homovanillic acid. And the reason it's on the test is specifically to identify the potential presence of SAMI deficiencies, what's called S-adenosylmethionine. Also a genetic SNP, a polymorphism in the catecholamine O-methyltransferase enzyme could also influence DOPAC levels. So it's a very comprehensive, complicated part of the organic acid test. It's also a complicated part um, when it comes to biochemistry. Dopamine has an influence, obviously, in the brain or nervous system for attention and focusing, but too much dopamine can lead to neurotoxicity. Not enough dopamine can lead to behavioral issues, focusing problems, depression, etc. So there's a lot of things that actually influence dopamine. Now, SAMI is part of the methylation cycle. It's actually part of what they call the methionine cycle. So if we took, essentially, let me get a different color pen here. If we took homocysteine, we know that homocysteine gets converted to methionine through the actions of the methionine synthase enzyme or this enzyme here called betaine homocysteine methyltransferase. Now, acidenosylmethionine comes off the back end of methylation as we're moving from methionine back down to homocysteine. And what's important about SAMI is that it is a methyl donor for methylation of DNA and RNA at the nucleus level of our cells. It has importance in regulating the cell membranes of the body as well as supporting neurotransmitter function. So here's just another view of SAMI. So we've got s methionine, again, that helps support neurotransmitter levels, supports healthy function of DNA and RNA, as well as the phospholipids. And phospholipids are part of our cell membranes, including our mitochondrial membranes. So there's a number of things that can influence DOPAC. So a high DOPAC could occur because of some type of inhibition of an enzyme called dopamine beta hydroxylase. So we're going to look at three different examples, a polymorphism that, if, that could exist in the dopamine beta hydroxylase, clostridia toxins from clostridia bacteria, and vitamin C and copper deficiencies. We know, too, that a polymorphism in the catecholamine O-methyltransferase enzyme could also cause DOPAC to rise. Magnesium deficiencies can influence it. And if you also increase your intake of L-tyrosine and L-phenylalanine as amino acids. So here's our view of the organic acid test with relationship to phenylalanine, tyrosine, dopa and dopamine. Now dopamine normally gets converted to norepinephrine through the actions of this dopamine beta hydroxylase enzyme. But there are things that inhibit its function. 
various Clostridia bacterial toxins for creosol and HPHPA, which are produced from multiple Clostridia species or Clostridia difficile can negatively influence dopamine beta hydroxylase. What happens is the enzyme becomes inhibited. Anytime dopamine beta hydroxylase activity is inhibited, we'll see a rise in dopamine, which can then be picked up as an increased level of HVA on the organic acid test, as well as an increased level of DOPAC potentially. There can also be polymorphisms, okay? So there's multiple polymorphisms that are known to affect the dopamine beta hydroxylase. It's just not known exactly which polymorphism actually slows it down. Great Plains Laboratory now has a test that evaluates for the activity of dopamine beta hydroxylase. So Clostridia bacteria can again inhibit dopamine beta hydroxylase, causing the dopamine levels to go up. And that's a problem because dopamine, again, when it's too high in the brain or nervous system, can be toxic. It produces a compound called dopamine oquinone, which damages the nerve cell. It turns out that copper and ascorbic acid are cofactors for dopamine beta hydroxylase activity, meaning that if there is a copper deficiency or an ascorbic acid deficiency, the activity of dopamine beta hydroxylase can be reduced. So that can be another inhibitor of dopamine beta hydroxylase activity and a rise in dopamine is a deficiency of copper and ascorbic acid. High DOPAC can also occur, as I mentioned before, because of a polymorphism in the catecholamine O-methyltransferase enzyme. So something that's affecting or causing our COMT activity to decrease can cause our DOPAC activity to increase. Now, Great Plains Laboratory, doctor's data, have their own methylation profiles. And you can also find COMT information off of many other types of genetic uh, tests as well. So a heterozygous or a homozygous mutation in our COMT can affect, our, uh, affect the function of COMT, leading to a rise of DOPAC. Polymorphisms in the monoamine oxidase A enzyme can also affect DOPAC as well. So causes of low DOPAC can occur because of decreased intake or absorption of tyrosine or phenylalanine, the precursors essentially to dopamine, a deficiency of B6 or monoamine oxidase inhibitors, certain drugs and certain supplements could do it. Also, things that cause a downregulation of MAOA. So a mutation that causes the MAOA to slow down could decrease DOPAC levels. But one of the things that's interesting is, is in a deficiency of this chemical called BH4, tetrahydrobiopterin. And tetrahydrobiopterin is discussed in more detail in a separate video titled Methylation and Biopterin Metabolism. Make sure to watch that. So I'm Dr. Kurt Waller. I have been an integrative and functional medicine physician now for over 20 years. I've done clinical education for Great Plains Laboratory for many years. Um, I'm also the co-founder of Integrative Medicine Academy, an online academy with mastery courses in different topics related to integrative medicine. I speak throughout the United States as well as internationally. I've written a number of books. I'm a clinical educator as well as a practicing clinician. And I've worked with children with autism for many years, patients with autoimmune, gastrointestinal, and neurological disorders. 
And one of the running themes of our mastery courses, including the advanced oat mastery course, is think critically and think clinically. And that's what the organic acid test is all about. It's not just about looking at the numbers, but it's how to apply the test and the different sections on the test to the clinical presentation of your patient. It's a critically important test. It's the hub of the wheel, if you will, of functional medicine testing. And the advanced oat mastery course will go again through each marker individually, very in depth, as well as we'll look to organize information from each category or each section on the organic acid test. And then part of this course is also learning how the organic acid test can relate to other types of testing as well, like chemical testing or mold testing. So for more information about the advanced oat mastery course you can go to advanced oat mastery course.com if you have any questions you can email us at advanced oat mastery course at gmail.com and you have access to the special report this complimentary special report you can text the word oat off your cell phone to 66866 and you'll be sent a link to download this book Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wooler for the Advanced Oat Mastery Course. Thank you.